could teach one class for the rest of your life, what would you, what would you teach and why? Salvation history. Okay. <laughs> I would just go from the Bible from Genesis to Revelation <laughs> yeah. and just keep doing that yeah. over and over again. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I just, yeah. It, it's seeing the story. I mean, um, I, I've written, I've written big books and I've written small books, but my first book was uh, Bible Basics for Catholics, where I just did stick figures and do a stick figure Adam <laughs> on a mountain Eden, a little garden, a little tree there, you know, and do Noah and his ark and so on. <laughs> Just using these simple figures, and in, in many ways, that's still my favorite book. And uh, profound stuff doesn't have to be confusing. Hmm. It can be really, uh, it can be really, really simple. In fact, the simplest things are the most profound. God is the simplest being; hmm. He's also the most profound. Hmm. Theologians will tell you that. Uh, so, yeah, I like keeping it simple, and um, you know, just. Communi communicating the reality of God's love for us and in, in the story of, of how he has saved us. How have you seen lay Catholics especially grow in their understanding and appreciation of Scripture over the last 20 or so years? I think there's a lot more uh, study of Scripture, uh, you know, even now than there was 20 years ago. I think that's, that's uh, it's uh, less surprising uh, for there to be a parish Bible study. Um, then, and, and who's responsible for that, or who you know? Many different groups, many different yeah. groups. But I mean, uh, if there's any one person, Scott Hahn <laughs> and Scott and Kimberly have done like a monumental uh, job of uh, setting people on fire for Scripture all over, and then uh, folks that they've had contact with, and mm. and uh, some of the some of the young men that they've mentored. Uh, who've gone on to st uh, to start different apostolates, but but it's many, it, it's it's many mm -hmm, people, mm -hmm. um, and I, I think I think um, you know one of the fruits of Vatican II was the uh, the richness of the new lectionary with all its reading of scripture, and it's taken a while for that to sink in, but I think that it's borne good fruit, and um, I think that people have been meditating on scripture more. Uh, just by the daily readings, which are exposing us to a much broader spectrum of Scripture than we had prior to the Council. So people that get Magnificat, uh, they may think, oh, I'm praying the Church's liturgy, but they're also doing Scripture study, <laughs> whether they're aware or not, just by meditating on the readings for each day and, and for each uh, uh, feast day. And uh, so, uh, you know, it's kind of a, a groundswell. Then you have all, all the Protestants that have come into the church, uh, especially mm. Protestant clergy. Oh, people like yourself as well. <laughs> exactly. Um, who've been drawn in. J uh, John Paul II had a, had a very evangelistic effect. His attractiveness made it easier for others to come into the Catholic Church. And so you're, you're, you're getting these, these, you know, trained biblicists, you know, uh, pro Protestant clerics coming in who have all this Bible knowledge, and then, well, what, what can I do with it? And the, and the church has I need a found job. ways. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> found, the church has found ways to, to put them to work. You know, I've found a way to put me to work. And, and it would seem that there is even more well, respect for Catholic Bible scholars today that maybe there wasn't 40, 50 years ago in the Protestant community. Is that right or no? I think there is. I think that's, I think that's true. Um, I, I'm hearing Protestant people referencing Petra and yeah. uh, others. Yes, uh, absolutely. I think I think that is true. Um, you know, it's gone in different waves. Uh, uh, you know, initially back in back in the 50s, uh, non-Catholic scholars looked down on Catholic scholars because the the magisterium uh, put some controls on Catholic biblical scholarship and said there's some parameters beyond which you can't go. So it's kind of like uh, you know, the wild kids outside the fence, uh, you know, teasing the goody two shoes kids <laughs> that had to stay inside the fence because their parents told them to stay there. And yeah, and the kids inside the fence are like, oh, you know, resenting that because they want to get out with the wild yeah. kids, you know. So there was a stage where in the 60s and the 70s where Catholic Bible scholars got unleashed, as it were, by the magisterium. And you can go play with the crazy kids down the street and so they went went with the the german crazy kids and, and learned all the german techniques and stuff like that and there was a kind of this yeah. this uh crazy period but i think there's been a, a, a so what's interesting is i think yeah. even protestants look back in embarrassment 
for at, how at some of that, yeah, 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 some of the excesses of of uh, you know some of the excesses of the historical critical method and mm. so on. But I think there's been a sobering and a settling down uh, uh, in in uh, more recent years um, in in some parts of the church at least, and uh, kind of a. A more sober assessment, and and and, and uh, Pope Benedict is is responsible for a large part of this. You know, in 1988, he had a famous lecture where he talked about the state of biblical scholarship, and uh, it was called the Erasmus Lecture. He gave mm-hmm. it in New York, and um, and said that there's a you know the time has come for like a, a sober assessment of of what is good and what is bad of contemporary Bible scholarship. And I think there's there's been some of that going on, and um, uh, there's been some advances in archaeology and language that really do help us to understand the Bible better. And then there's also been some philosophically and ideologically driven uh, errors in biblical interpretation that I'm hoping that we are overcoming. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let me put it that way. So, but uh, but yeah, I do think that there's a lot of good things happening in, in Catholic biblical scholarship, and it's exciting to be part of that. Thank you for watching this clip. You can click here to watch the full episode. And I want to say a big thanks to our sponsors and to our amazing patrons for making all of this possible. Please do us a favor before you go, click that subscribe button and then the bell, and that way YouTube will be forced to let you know every time we put out a new episode.